Well, folks, welcome back to the workshop. Today we have an unusual one for you. Well, not so much unusual. It's a common problem. More so it's unusual for this age of a machine. We have a Bosch Hammer, a GBH 5 stroke 40 DCE. This is the newer version Bosch Hammer. As you can see, she ain't that old. 2021. Problem with it. Now, she is running and everything. But the problem with it is she's not hammering. Now, any Kango or hammer not hammering, losing its hammer function, is not unusual. Happens all the time. You can need a service, could be a broken o ring inside, the grease could be worn out of it. There's all different things that could actually cause it. But it's not so common with a machine that's basically under three years old. This Bosch is probably only about two years old, manufactured in 2021, probably sold in 2022, it's now 2024. So she's probably done about two years worth of work, but as you can see from her, it's not all that dirty. Doesn't look like it's done an awful lot of work. So it's not very common for it to lose the hammer so soon. So either this has done a lot of work and simply doesn't look like it and it actually needs a full service. The seals are all gone on it. Or it's been laying up a long time. Sometimes when you leave a machine lying up at an angle or lying face down. The actual striker or hammer bolt can slide forward and actually jam on the back of the actual tool holder. can lock in the place there. Fairly common one, happens quite often with these here Bosch hammers. Generally, it's caused by actually not being used and stored in the wrong position. It actually causes that. So I'd imagine it's going to be one of those two. Either a service needed, or their hammer or striker jammed up here. But we'll know straight away whenever we open her up, which it is. If we take off this cover and the grease is black, we know it needs a service. If it's fairly fresh, we know it's probably going to be a stuck hammer bolt up here. Maybe they've bought it and they've just been storing it sitting upright like this. The hammer slid forward and locked against the holes in the actual hammer pipe and the o-rings formed them holes. Happens quite often. We'll open her up and see what the crack is. Right, it's not a service anyway. That hasn't done much work at all. Now, it could just be that it's too free and she's actually running nothing. But you can see that gear is engaging both the clutch and the crank. And the piston is connected. So it's all there. It's not that it's actually running too free and the piston's actually sheared off or broken or the crank teeth are snapped off. She's running. She's doing everything she needs to do. That is doing everything it needs to. You can hear we have a compression as well from the piston. So it's not a compression problem. It might just be the striker jammed up here. Hopefully anyway, because that'll be a nice simple fix. And that wouldn't require doing the whole service in this machine. You wouldn't want to give this an entire service because it's really not that old. And you would only service it if it actually needed it. Remember the colour of that grease, it just hasn't done anything. You can still see the yellow grease here, the original bar stuff. It hasn't even really been mixed through an awful lot. So in other words, it hasn't been used an awful lot. So it could just be a storage problem. Get off the tool holder so we can get onto the C clip on here. Thank you. 
that out. I'd rather leave this stuff all in if I can. Intact. It should be able to just sit there. You can see the striker or the hammer is all the way to the bottom, so that might be the problem. No. Normally when they lock in, there's wee holes up here. That o-ring sits on the holes, and molds into the holes. So you'll actually get an indentation from the holes on the o-ring. That just doesn't have it. What's that about? Ah, actually, we have a more serious problem. See all the things and chips. Something smashed inside, actually. Oh. Look at that. She's done a right bit of damage. What's actually happened is she's completely smashed the striker pan inside or the hammer bolt, the butt that actually hits your chisel to transfer the energy. She's split right down the middle. Though. That is actually split right down the middle. Well, that was probably jammed in place. Yeah. So over the top of that striker bolt, be a steel ring connected onto this plastic piece with a few steel pins. So that should slide up and down. That's not moving. Well, that's our actual problem. It's nothing to do with the striker itself. See if we can salvage this thing. Sadly, I don't even think this thing's warranty. Boris warranty is one year. You only get the three years if you registered online and they didn't send them any paperwork to say that this was registered. Don't think this is a warranty repair. No, typical. Pins are jammed on as well. How do I get those out to get the steel ring out? It's actually worse than I thought. These actual pins here, the four of them, they're actually located into a steel ring inside, like heavy steel washer basically with four holes in it. That's what that actual striker bolt is sitting inside of. If you look down here, you can see it's actually cracked. So that will probably have expanded and jammed itself onto the hammer chamber here. So how am I getting that out? Plastic inserts, all right, there's not 
that's not damaged, so I don't want to break it if I can avoid it. Right, let's see if we can shift the pin. Show sure striker pin here. See if we can shift it back a little bit. And relieve some of the pressure. Split right down the middle. There we go. That frees out the pins. That out. That. See if we can get the rest of it out now. That's cracked. Need to replace that. I have to replace that bump now. She's all chewed up. Look at that. Never seen that with a Bosch before. I think that's the first Bosch hammer I've ever seen a striker pun break on. I think somebody just cut that out. Or it must have just been a fault in that during the manufacturing. It's been a hairline crack in it. Eventually gave way, snapped, jammed up the striker bolt inside the tool holder. I think that's the first one of them I've ever seen break on a Bosch. Normally see it in something like a Healthy, never a Bosch. Don't even think I've ever seen it in Makita either. Milwaukee's, sometimes they break, but it's generally because the tool holder snaps in half here. So the actual tool holder breaks front way from the hammer pipe. That causes us to break. The healthies can sometimes just shatter or mushroom down here and jam up. Never seen it in the Bosch. Let's see if I have one of these now. Okay, we're on luck. I have one in stock. Plus, I have the wee steel bush as well. Funnily enough, that's not sold separately from Bosch. To buy that, you actually have to buy. This whole lock assembly kit. So if you want the pins or this, so you actually have to buy basically all of that there together, not including the striker itself. Everything that slides on here basically without the tool holder or the striker. And it also includes the piston o-ring and the hammer and this here hammer o-ring as well. Plus the little rubber bump. Have one of them. I just happen to have one of these separate. Replace that, get rid of that one, get rid of the old bump, and get rid of the striker. I'm assuming this is the right striker anyway. It's been sitting here for a while, even the actual label's gone on the bag. But it's on the right box. And it looks round about the same. So we'll chance that. Now, more than likely that's probably off an older model, a Bosch GSH-5CE. It's the exact same striker, same part number, 
it's just using this machine as well. You can't see us having ordered one of these on for these newer machines. I imagine it's for the older one. We just happen to have it in stock. That also shows you how often these are changed. When we had in stock, it was obviously never used. God knows how long that's lying there. Uh, before we do anything else, I'm going to wash these parts out. Because obviously, this broke inside of here. These hardened steel parts will have been beaten off each other and have chopped away. See there's wee cracks and bits missing. So these little pieces will have went somewhere. More than likely inside the hammer pipe and on all these components. Like the O-rings. Doesn't feel too bad. Could also change that striker as well. That actually comes with this whole kit if you buy it together. I don't have the kit. I don't want to sit waiting for it to come in. So I'm going to leave that as is. Get away with that. Save a wee bit of money not having to replace all these parts. So just the bush, the striker bolt, this bump. And seeing as Radar also changed the piston and striker o-rings as well. Just in case they had any debris on them. Now wash all these out as well. Just make sure there's no bits on them. Now, because we have this part broken up in here. More than likely, there could be a bit of metal inside of here, so I will have to wash that out. And if I'm washing this out, I'm going to have to wash out this. Which means I have to take this out after all. Shame, I was going to have to replace all the grease too. Right, get on, wash all this too, and all this stuff. Now, that just goes to show why it's so important to actually wash these things out. When a part breaks inside the hammer mechanism, and smashes like that, you really do need to wash it out. And I'm actually washing this out in the parts washer, and the washing fluid washing through here, you can actually hear bits of debris dropping out of here, and actually hitting the metal tray in the parts washer. You would assume the way she looks, it will be alright to reuse that grease, but obviously not. If you don't wash it out, then pieces of metal, then bits of debris, actually off a striker bolt, piece of hard steel, seriously hard steel, that's getting hammered both sides. Hammer this side, chisel that side. That's seriously hard piece of steel. That breaks off, it's going to cause all sorts of damage if not taken out, obviously, to your tool holder. But also, it's going to wear out your seals as well. Worse than that, if you leave it on there, eventually it's going to get to your gears. A piece of that actually wedges in between the teeth. That's going to break off your gear teeth. If it breaks off this one, it'll more than likely damage this one, which is part of your armature. That's 150 quid. That's 80 quid. That's another 100 quid. You really don't want to be getting bits of debris and destroying the gears. Now, she's all cleaned out anyway and ready to go. These are all the old pieces. These are the new pieces here, ready to go. Now, looking at this stuff all together. Now people always ask, looking at this pile of parts, how can you remember how to put it together? There's actually not an awful lot to it. Everything is basically sub-assemblies. So, looks complicated when it's all scattered like this, but I'm just used to putting it back together. Once you actually break it down, So you've got your parts for your tool holder up here, they're going to be going on last. And you've got your gears and your bearings, which has a washer as well, your seal, washer for that, and the rubber for the top of it. Then your actual rotation, your piston. shim for that, these pieces, and all these here then, that's also part of your tool holder. These pieces here are all for inside, that's also your tool holder. These pieces then are all for inside your hammer pipe. And there you
your tool holder. So that's what you end up with. Piston striker, your actual gears for rotation, your crank, your clutch, all up here is your tool holder, that's just your cover, your seal at the front, your actual hammer pipe. This is for everything inside the hammer pipe then on, on the outside. So once you break them down into sub-assemblies, they're actually not that complicated. Fairly easy to do. It's just the way I'm doing it. Looks complicated when it's scattered around like that. Now, seeing as we have stripped everything down and washed it all out, and we're also changing the grease, we can also just change the two rings on the piston and striker as well, just in case. We're going to stick this all back together again just to find out she's got a weak hammer. So I'll just change them now when we have it out. Now, I'm starting some of the bigger stuff. That was a fairly new machine, so there should be nothing wrong with these needle bearings. They were all washed out as well, so there should be no debris on them. It'll be coated in grease whenever it's actually assembled, but until then we'll just put a wee layer on it, just for the initial start-up. A little shim sits inside of here as well. Keep them all sandwiched together. There's normally actually the Bosch white grease that goes onto this, but I just use this heavier gear grease for initial setup. I could stop spilling it everywhere. Don't have to use that, that's just what I prefer to use myself. Stick it all together of this actual slider all the way up so it's actually holding the shim in the center so it's not dropping down. You want to take that assembly with your piston, put your piston in, install the piston. On the crank, and then the piston all the way down. Just make sure you have this actual selector ring all the way back so it's keeping that shim in place. It just makes it easier whenever you get your tool holder all together and you're sliding the whole assembly back in again. The shim doesn't get in the way of the tool holder. 
If you keep the select ring all the way back, the shim is sitting in the centre of it and keeps it located. So I'll leave that aside now. And we'll get on with the main event, the actual problem. The actual new striker pin comes with the seal and o-ring already on it. I'll use the lighter grease for here because it's on a paintbrush and I can actually get it onto this tool holder, get it all the way to the bottom. So this is going on first, put your bump on the top of it, then your steel bush on the top of that. And they all just slide straight on. Shut down and just locate the holes for your steel bush. Have them facing towards you. Bring ring over the top, and then this ring goes over the top of that. Obviously, the wide end goes to the bottom. Otherwise, there'd be no way to get the steel ring over the top to lock in them pins. Stick that on, put your steel pans in through it to locate this plastic sleeve onto the steel bush on the inside. That steel ring just holds them in place. And the steel ring is held on with a spring clip. That's why she should be moving nice and free. This bush goes over the top then. And your spring. And this washer to finish it off. Put more grease inside. And you put your striker, your hammer, back in again. Obviously the o-ring goes towards the piston side. That's that but this is just the seal for keeping the dirt out and the oil on. That just slides onto the front. Now we're ready to marry the two halves before we put them on. A little bit more grease on there. Steel ring still facing back. Get your tool holder assembly now. Slide that on. And gently rotate it. Make sure this stays in position. And just rotate as you're going on. Once you get so far on, you can slide this ring over so that your whole tool holder can now rotate. And you can squeeze it all on with your fingers. This little T shaped washer is over the top, engages the oil seal on the body of the machine here. C clip holds the whole thing together. And as always, just 
Just make sure that C-clip is fully engaged. That's her. Fully installed. That's hammer mode where the chisel can rotate. That's rotation mode. Hammer's running and boring as well. And when she goes back here, she's, she's on hammer only with the chisel locked. So just leave it in that mode for now. So now into this, I want to put 80 mil of this lighter grease. You could also use this yellow gear grease in the hammer. You'll get great hammer compression of it, but because of the X viscosity, it's a lot more difficult to move around for the motor. So it's going to strain the motor a wee bit too much. You need this lighter stuff. Some of the other Bosch hammers actually use a mineral oil as well instead of a grease. We'll just stick in another 20. Let's make that up to 80 mil of grease. Now the selector ring still down here on hammer mode. Same as our top cover, still on hammer mode as well. We'll keep the selector, drop it on, drop the whole thing down. Now, just in case, I'm also going to put a little bit of Loctite on these screws, make sure they don't come loose. Just a little dab, nothing major. Better something than nothing. And as always, don't just go tighten them up straight away. Make sure you're going onto the same original thread. These here are actually self tapping bolts. If you look straight down the middle of them, the top of them is actually a triangular shape called tri-lobed. Whenever these are actually produced, the bodies that these screws go onto aren't actually tapped. It's just a raw aluminium hole. These here actually make their own thread. They're self-tapping. So as you actually screw these on, they make the thread themselves and tap into the aluminium body. It means whenever they go in, they're a nice, snug, tight fit. And they don't have a tendency to actually come out again. But whenever you're reinstalling them, because they're self-tappers, Put them on wrong, you're going to start cutting a new thread and weakening the hole they're getting into. So to ensure you don't cross thread them or start cutting a new thread, you need to get onto the original thread. To do that, just screw them under reverse first while it's pushing down. Hear that click? That's the original thread. Just go in reverse till you hear the click. And that's you. Most times I get these machines on, or these bolts all struck out, destroyed, reboard, because people just go straight ahead and start tightening these on without checking. They end up stripping out the threads. One left hand turn. That's all you need to do to ensure you don't cross thread it. And that goes for any machine bolt, not just these here. Slap them home then with the drill. Now, all we have now is a tool holder. the ring first is just a little dust shield in your spring tinner plate for holding your holding down for holding your actual holding down devices this here boys steel ring off the top of that a rubber bump on top of that this actually has a bevel, but it's on both sides, so it doesn't matter which way you put it on. Then your C clip for the top to hold all that together. Before we 
put that on. Stick on the clamp for the handle. And your sleeve. And your cap. And that's her. One Bosch hammer. With a broken striker pin. Stripped down, parts replaced, cleaned out, and rebuilt again. Sounding better anyway. Make sure she hammers now. Sounding good anyway. That's her. One new Bosch GBH 5 stroke 40 DCE. That's a boring Bosch hammer. Fixed up again with a new striker bolt. That is an oddball one. Haven't seen that before, but one to look out for. If you have one of these newer hammers, it's just not hammered at all. It just seems to be dead. You're not getting any feedback from the chisel. The chisel doesn't seem to be going down fully into the machine. It's not giving any spring back. Check the striker inside the tool holder. She could have bust like that. But I imagine that'll be an odd one. You'll not see too many of them like it. First one I've ever seen anyway. Just remember folks, if you have a tool and it stops working or it breaks, it's always worth checking first to see if it can be fixed. This one here, one broken part caused all the trouble. That and the sub-assembly of parts for this here piece cost about 100 euro. 100 euro to fix it, 800 euro machine. You wouldn't want to be dumping something like this just for that part. Because you'd be surprised how often they're well worth fixing. This one most certainly was anyway. Anyway folks, give us a wee like and a follow at the bottom if you're enjoying the tool repair videos. Because we hit the wee bell notification too. If you want to become members to support the channel, please do. Thanks for watching. Cheers.